Welcome back to California Cooking. We're kicking off the unofficial start of summer with a barbecue pop-up in the burbs that's getting a ton of buzz, then an LA-style street dog, shrimp and sausage skewers, and a watermelon margarita perfect for your summer gatherings. Chef Logan Sandoval and his wife Anna were both working in the restaurant industry when everything shut down at the start of the pandemic. They may have lost their jobs, but when one door closes, another one opens. They started a barbecue business out of their home, and boy, has it taken off. I'm Logan. I'm Anna. And we are co-owners of Zeff Barbecue. Zeff Barbecue is a local Simi Valley pop-up uh, that started during a time of need uh, when the global pandemic started. We make really awesome barbecue out of a neighborhood in Simi Valley. So Zeth Barbecue was born out of a need to, one, keep ourselves busy during the pandemic, but two, make sure that we were still creating income and create, generating revenue for our family. We have a, you know, a four-year-old daughter that's going on five next month. When the pandemic came through, it was really tough on both of us because we were both long-standing employees of the culinary industry and of the restaurant industry, and that was the first thing that was gutted. So she lost her job, I lost my job. We didn't really have a place to stay or live because we were in transition from one hotel to another. Um, and so we moved back in with my folks here in Simi Valley. Uh, I came back down to Simi Valley up from Northern California with our daughter um, about a week before Logan lost his job officially. And he texted me on a Tuesday and said, hey, what do you think about selling barbecue out of mom and dad's house? And I was like, I mean, sure, why not? And then nine days later, our first menu was live and people were ordering and we sold out in 30 minutes, which was incredible for us because we had no idea what to expect. Um, mm -hmm. And that from there, it was kind of one of those things where it was just like, I think this is working. We did about a whole year almost until the end of 2020. And then at the beginning of 2021, we had an LA Eater article come out, which has just taken our business to the next level. Um, Farley Elliott, we are indebted to you for the rest of our lives. The Eater article said that we were one of the best new restaurants in California, which was very humbling and, and also very astounding. <laughs> I am classically trained. Um, and I've done a lot of work in Michelin star restaurants and a lot of high-end resorts and a lot of high-end hotels. Um, so for 10 years, I kind of, you know, dedicated my life to that and got kicked in the mud and did a lot of hard work and worked a lot of long hours. So to get to this point and to get that, that recognition from our own hard work and from our own concept was, was extremely fulfilling. It was, it was crazy. So we came back to see me to do barbecue because we could not come back to see me and do a 14 course tasting menu or <laughs> sushi or I mean there's already a, a ton of Hispanic restaurants, taquerias, and, yeah. yeah. So we wanted to curb something that was a little bit more unique for the area and something that's getting more and more popular in Southern California and we really got in when the getting was, was good. So we specialize in Central Texas style barbecue. We use a 500 gallon offset cooker. There's no vertical smoke. We use all white oak that we mix with red oak for certain items. But as far as like our barbecue style, it spans from Hawaii to China to the Middle East to South America and then all the way back to Central Texas with even like a flair of California in it. We try not to paint ourselves into a corner of a single type because we feel stagnation is the death of any business. And that's kind of where our business name comes from. Zef came out of the South African post-apartheid, and so Zef was a group of young, hip, kind of do-what-you-want people. So they lived below the poverty line, they danced the way they wanted to dance, they listened to the type of music they wanted to listen to. And so with Zef, we kind of try to input that into our food, where it's we do these foods through the lens of the Texas barbecue, but you're not gonna find another barbecue that's, you know, barbecue company that's doing ramen. You're not making scratch ramen. We're not, you know, they're, we're making our own spam. We're making our own spam hot links. We're making banh mi's. We're making um, pho, pecking duck. We're making tacos. And if there's something that catches our eye, we kind of look at it like, okay, how can we do that on our 500 gallon cooker. 
Classics will always be there. Um, obviously the heart and soul of our operation is brisket. A lot of people do brisket, but we do it with all white oak, using an offset cooker, so the combustion is a little bit different than if you use wood chips or, or, or charcoal. And we stand really hard by that. We also do the ribs. Another big seller is what we call like our dino bones, which is a plate rib, which comes from the short rib. We do fried chicken, we do pulled pork. We always have the staples, but then we try to introduce two or three specials each week. And the specials aren't just for us to do and because they taste good, but it's also a way to educate our community on different cultures and different communities from around the world. Because food always brings people together, especially, no matter what. Especially right now and especially last year. And it was even better to be able to bring it back and do it in my hometown. And we wouldn't be where we are without the community of Simi Valley. Barbecue HQ, my parents, all of our friends. Good, huh? We do love what we're doing. We love what we're doing. It's hard, and there's days that we look at each other and we're like, Are we, we're doing the right thing, right? Yeah. There's down days and there's up days, and you know, you work through them, and you know, we stay busy, and everything's been in insanely gratifying. What a great story. I can't wait to see what's next for Logan and NZF Barbecue. And in case you were wondering what he was spraying all over the meat, it's an apple cider vinegar mixture and it helps keep the meat moist and delicious. Coming up, I'm grilling up a bacon wrapped hot dog with all the fixins. Then another great dish to fire up on the barbecue this summer, shrimp and sausage skewers with peppers and onions. And it's a signature cocktail that your guests are gonna love. I'm making a refreshing watermelon mint margarita. A summer cookout would not be complete without grilling up some hot dogs. And I love your basic hot dog. But this time, I'm firing up some LA style street dogs. Take a look. You know those hot dogs, maybe you see them when you're leaving a concert in LA or a nightclub, or not that I've been to a nightclub in years, but they smell so good. The hot dogs with the vendors on the street and they're wrapped in bacon and they smell so divine. And I never stop and get one, but I was watching um, Roy Choi in an episode and he called them these kind of LA like street vendor dogs and I'm gonna make a version of that and I always you know I'm a huge fan of hot dogs I love them only in the summer do I eat them and I can rarely pass up a good hot dog so I thought this would be kind of a fun thing to serve up for your barbecue maybe you're having friends over for you know Memorial Day 4th of July whatever it is and have these wrapped hot dogs in bacon I'm gonna grill up some onions, some peppers, some avocado, and then I make this sauce on top. So what I'm gonna start with is wrapping my hot dogs. And before I get to this onion and start crying, let me show you what I did here. It's this simple, you take your hot dog, you take your piece of bacon, and you wrap it, and that's it. And so I've got my griddle going back here. There we go, they're ready for it. And then I put my dogs down and let these get nice, like a medium heat. You don't wanna burn your bacon. Um, and those will take a little longer than a regular hot dog, but we'll let those go. And then we're gonna chop up, slice up some onions and peppers. And this is what smells so good when you're walking by and you smell these being grilled. I'm gonna slice up this onion, pretty thin slices. Just gonna get those on there. Now to our peppers. I like the red and the green for this. All right, now onto our red pepper. Same deal, gorgeous red pepper. And sometimes I just cut the white membrane out in the middle. I'm curious to take a peek at our hot dog. Okay. <laughs> Give him a turn. You want every side to be nice and brown. Move our onions over. And then when the hot dogs are done, I'll put our peppers on. And you're only dirty in one pan, which is even better. While our hot dogs are frying up back there, I'm gonna make a sauce. 
This is my go-to sauce whenever I serve up burgers, hamburgers, uh, hot dogs. I make this, which is mayo, ketchup, mustard, all the things you love in one sauce. And then I hit it sometimes with a little sriracha. Now, if someone you know, only wants mustard, obviously they can have that, but the idea of combining it is actually really yummy. And I'm, you'd be surprised if you've never tried it. So equal parts, maybe a little less on the mustard. Okay, now mix it up and see what the color, that's how I know if it's right. It's looking right. It's kind of got the Thousand Island kind of a color. And then for this, some sriracha, which won't make it spicy depending on how much. Just give it a little kick and actually just a tad little bit of sweetness too. Hot dog time. How we doing? It smells crazy good in here. Onions, gorgeous. I'm gonna get my peppers going too. Now I've got um, hot dog rolls and these are these kind of brioche, buttery, soft rolls. And I'm gonna just pop them under the broiler for a second just to toast them up. Now, the other thing I'm gonna do, which normally I would never do this, but I think for presentation, and especially if you wanna just put your sauce on the table and everybody can top their own. I got a little squeeze bottle at the grocery store. Sauce ready. I'm gonna take the hot dogs off. You just want all the bacon crispy. So those are pretty good to go. Time to build our dog. Look at that. All crispy. We've got our peppers and onions. I think I need a bigger bun here. Just to give it that nod to LA, I'm gonna tuck in a couple little avocado slices. We're gonna hit it with our sauce. Your LA dog. I thought I'd sneak outside for a little lunch. I cannot wait to taste these hot dogs. I might have already snuck a bite. <laughs> oh. My first time making a bacon wrapped hot dog, the bacon got crispy. So you bite into that and you get a little bit of the spicy from the sauce, the grilled peppers and onions. This is my new hot dog of choice. Mmm. The smell alone of hot dogs wrapped in bacon with peppers and onions, man, is it good. Hope you guys give it a try. Coming up, I'm grilling up shrimp and sausage skewers. Plus, you know it's summer when watermelon's in season. I'm mixing up a watermelon mint margarita that is so tasty and refreshing. That's coming up next. grilling anything on a skewer, and I was inspired by the ingredients that you find in a jambalaya. So here's my shrimp, sausage, and peppers skewers. This could be one of those things where everybody helps out, you just need some skewers, and maybe dad fires up the grill. I'm gonna grill inside um, on my grill pan, which makes it pretty easy too, but this is just, I made this the other night for dinner because I had, you know, I had some frozen shrimp that I dethawed and some veggies and that was it. So I got some shrimp, you could use frozen and thaw them out, but what I did is I peeled them. And here's the thing about shrimp, it's a little bit of a messy job. You can get them peeled and deveined, but you take the, the peel off and you just run a knife like that along the back and you just clean out anything that's there. Okay, so that's, We'll, we won't get into it, but that's how you clean a shrimp. It's very, once you peel it, it's super easy to do. And if you are gonna grill on a regular barbecue, like a charcoal or a gas grill, you wanna soak your skewers. So you just soak them in water for a few minutes so they don't burn. But I think what makes a skewer look so appetizing are all the colors, the red onion, the yellow and orange peppers, the red tomatoes. So you just get everything chopped up. Here's a couple of kielbasa. Um, this is already cooked sausage, and you're just gonna wanna get some grill marks on it. I'm just gonna chop up some, and this is where you could get, if you like chicken sausage or Italian sausage, go for it. But I like the idea of a kielbasa 
because it kind of reminded me too of the jambalaya flavors. We've got the shrimp and the kielbasa and the peppers. So let's build our skewers, but first let's season our shrimp. Some olive oil, some salt. I think a little Old Bay or smoked paprika would be great. Some lemon zest. Lemon juice can go on later, but lemon zest now because you don't want the water from the lemon, which means your shrimp won't brown if they're wet. Okay, lemon zest. Stir that up. Last thing, forgot, garlic. I'm gonna grate a couple of cloves of garlic in there too. You want your shrimp to have a lot of flavor. Garlic in. Got our skewer, let's do a shrimp. And I poke it through two ends, so it's like that. Shrimp, let's do tomato and a sausage. It's like that, so it has a flat surface, right? Oh, I got ahead of myself. We gotta cut up our peppers. So this is the easiest way I think to cut up a pepper is you just go around the stem. And there you go, you don't have to clean up the seeds and everything. So just chunks, right? Big enough to go on a skewer so they don't fall off. Any color pepper will work. Got some orange, let's cut up a yellow. Is this not the biggest bell pepper you've ever seen? It's massive. Get some yellow pepper going. Okay, perfect. So you wanna get your little assembly line going. Let's do yellow pepper, a red pepper, some onion, and one more shrimp to top it off. There we go. I think we have room for another tomato too. And then we'll pop that on a hot grill or grill pan. And you just keep building. Okay, our skewers are ready. The house is a little smoky, but well worth it. Cause you gotta cook these pretty high to get that nice char. I love some good grill marks. And I just put them on a board. I also grilled up some lemons. All you do is cut the lemon in half, put it on the grill. Easy. And you could serve this with some grilled bread, rice. I've got some parsley, I'll just sprinkle over it. I think, of, I don't know what it is about green, but it wakes it up. And then what I do when I bring it to the board, I just hit it with some, there's something about grilling lemon. When you squeeze grilled lemon juice, it's sweet and smoky and yum. Mmm, mmm. That recipe is so easy and super flavorful and pretty too. And after all that barbecue, I think we need a good cocktail. So I'm mixing up a watermelon mint margarita. Take a look. I'm not one usually for the craft cocktail. I, I'm a rosé girl or maybe a Prosecco in the summer or something like that. But um, this drink I think would be a fun one to make if you have guests over, make a picture of it. And I remember having a version of it at Katsuya. And it was, I think it was made with rum and it was watermelon and mint. But I thought that would be a fun, refreshing cocktail to make. I don't like sweet cocktails. And that's I think the reason why I usually don't order them, but this wasn't sweet because there was no sugar added. It was just the sweetness you get from fresh watermelon and that was it. So. A couple of ice cubes I've got at the bottom of my blender. Just to make life easy, I bought already cut up watermelon, but you certainly could cut it up yourself. I just wanted to save some time. I think what we're gonna do first, before we add our mint, is just whir that up. It kind of reminds me of maybe an agua fresca, right? Which is just kind of a, a water-like texture, but it smells like Watermelon, now to that, I'm gonna add fresh mint. 
couple of handfuls. And you don't wanna start it from the beginning with the mint because it'll, it'll get too mixed up. I just want a quick chop of the mint. Okay. Okay, done. Now you could serve it just like this on ice. That would be beautiful. But we're gonna make a cocktail. I've got tequila. I've got, I like the Casamigos, but I don't really know much about tequila. So this seems like a lot, but this is gonna serve many people. So our watermelon mint juice. Oh, this is the hard part, a bunch of lime. I've got about six limes. To make our cute glass, to get the cute rim that you get when you order it at a restaurant where it has the salt around the rim. And instead of just salt, I'm gonna do salt and sugar rim. And then you take a lime and you go like this. Usually I only do it on half quarter of the glass. I don't do it all the way around. Beautiful. We'll put in our ice cubes, stir our watermelon mint margarita. Look at this, how pretty. What we're gonna do, just to make it extra special, take a lime and I think a little mint leaf. Sometimes do at the very end of making a cocktail, just for a little effervescence, a splash of Perrier. Cheers. That's really good. <laughs> I think that's gonna be my go-to cocktail this summer. It's so fresh with that watermelon juice. I think it's the go-to for the next couple of months. Well, that does it for us. Thanks for watching and we'll see you guys next time. I feel like I'm burning something. <laughs> I'm smelling some, oh, you guys. This is, I said, what did I say? And this is why. You should always do two bun two bags of buns. I have two left, that's it. I'm not even gonna put them in there. I don't trust myself. I, I warned myself. I said, don't burn the buns.